it's Ro. Welcome back to my channel. Today is all about the unicorn horn, which is the most important part of a unicorn because without the horn, a unicorn is just a horse. Today we're gonna be making some delicious treats using the new unicorn horn treat mold from my new baking line. As many of you know, I just released a bunch of new items for my baking line this summer and these were one of them. And you guys requested that I show you how to make some treats using this mold, so that is exactly what we're doing today. I am so excited and if you guys are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell, ding, to receive notifications every time I post a new video. Subscribing is free and delicious. This is what the unicorn horn mold looks like outside of the packaging. It's teal, it makes six treats, and each handle, look at this, has secret little hearts inside. These cute little designs, bloop, bloop, bloop. And the handle, where you hold it with your thumb, I made it curve so it'd be really comfortable. It's adorable! So to make your treats, you just fill each cavity with whatever you want. You can make rainbow popsicles, like you could crush up different types of fruit and layer them, or you could do Greek yogurt. I am a big fan of frozen yogurt. And you could use different purees to have different colors. You could fill them with chocolate. <gasps> White chocolate. <gasps> if you guys pick up one of these molds and you make something creative, please send me your pictures because I love seeing your creations. It just makes me so happy. So today, as requested, I'm gonna show you a couple of treats that you can make using the mold. The first treat that we're gonna be making is a candy unicorn horn to put on top of a narwhal cake. Let's get started. First step to making a narwhal cake is going to be making a unicorn horn in candy form. All you'll need are some white candy melts. If you don't wanna use white candy melts, you could use also white chocolate. That would work as well. We're gonna pop this in the microwave and stir it together. Scoop your melted candy or chocolate into one of these cavities. Now you only need one horn to make a cake, but if you wanna make multiple cakes, you can make as many as you'd like. But narwhals only have one horn, just like a unicorn. And in case you are not familiar, narwhals are unicorns of the sea and they're actual animals. One of my girlfriends did not know that they were actually an animal. She was like, narwhals, they're like made up like unicorns, they're not real. And I was like, no, narwhals are actually animals. They're real. Also, fun fact, narwhals change color. When they're baby narwhals, they're kind of like this blue-gray color. And then when they grow up, they kind of look like cookies and cream. They turn more gray and they have like little black like spots all over. So they kind of look like a crushed Oreo later in life. Goals. So just take a little spoon and pour it in. Just fill it all the way to the top. I'm filling it up to the first line. All right, once it's filled, just give it a tap, 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 tap. This will help get the air bubbles out. Now take a lollipop stick and you're gonna bloop, put it right in the middle. I'm gonna place it about halfway down. Now we're gonna set our candy unicorn horn off to the side to allow it to harden while we make our cake. So the cake recipe that we're making today is a dark chocolate sea salt recipe. It is delicious and it's perfect because we're making a little narwhal cake and he lives in the ocean in the sea and it's a dark chocolate sea salt cake. Ah! I personally love desserts that mix sweet and salty. This is my favorite, especially when there's chocolate involved. I'll be putting the ingredients and their measurements to this recipe down below in the description. Let's start over here. The first thing that we're gonna do in a large mixing bowl, we're gonna mix together our dry ingredients. So pour in your flour, coconut sugar, which is delicious, dark chocolate cocoa powder. Oh yeah! A little bit of baking powder baking soda, and a little bit of sea salt, which is different than your table salt. Table salt is technically a chemical and sea salt is a mineral. Now using a whisk, whisk together until well combined. I like to mix till it's all the same color. Our dry ingredients are looking good. Now over here in a medium bowl, you're gonna pour in your coconut oil and your dark chopped chocolate. I just, I'll need to do a little taste test as always. Just make sure it's delicious. Mm hmm oh yeah. I'm gonna mix together just a little bit with a spatula. Now take it over to the microwave and melt. This smells so good, OMG, look at this. 
I'm using a spatula, stirring it around a little bit. You want it to cool down just a little bit before we add our additional wet ingredients. So I'm just giving it a stir and just enjoying the aroma. Oh my God, this should be, this is my new vinaigrette. I'll just put this on top of salads. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Now add coconut milk, two eggs, we're gonna be adding the whole egg, and some vanilla extract. Then using a whisk again, whisk together till well combined. Can you imagine if these were scrambled eggs? You put this in a pan and you'd have chocolate scrambled eggs. Oh yes, we've got liquid chocolate, we've got dry chocolate. Now we are going to mix them together, combine them. But before we do, we're gonna use a little spatula and I'm just gonna make a little well in the middle of the dry ingredients. Like if you're a little gopher, you just you just dig a little, like a little hole. Pour all of your wet ingredients into the center of the dry. Oh my gosh, this just smells like coconut and chocolate and I'm just like drooling. I'm so messy, but who cares? Use your whisk again one last final time to mix together your dry and wet ingredients. And remember, as soon as the dry ingredients are incorporated into the wet, stop mixing. Boom. Dark chocolate sea salt cake batter is ready. So in front of me, I have three six inch round pans. These are the new pans from my baking line, but you can use whatever round pans you want. I like these ones because they have a 90 degree angle so that when you stack them they make a perfect cylinder and they have a bigger lip so it makes putting them into the oven and out of the oven pretty easy. Pour your cake batter and divide evenly between the three pans. You can also use two pans if you'd like. I'm just using three because I want frosting in between each layer of this cake. That's just me, but you can use two if you'd like. That would work fine too. I just like frosting. Little scoop for you, little scoop for you, little scoop for you and then we even it out. Before you pop them into the oven, give them a tap because this batter is very thick. It's like fudgy, it's so good. So you wanna make sure to tap it so it's nice and even. Now we're gonna pop all three of these cakes in the oven at 325 degrees and bake for about 30 to 35 minutes. Once your cakes have baked, give them plenty of time to cool, then we are going to assemble them. And this is what the cakes should look like. And don't worry, they're not supposed to be tall and fluffy. It's like fudgy. The cake is like a fudgy, it's almost like a brownie. <gasps> it's like a cake brownie. And it smells so good. There is so much moisture in this cake and it smells delicious. I placed one of the cakes on top of a turntable, this little thing in front of me. Boop, 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 boop. The turntables make frosting a little bit easier. Now I'm gonna be using a Swiss buttercream icing because I love Swiss buttercream. It is my favorite in the entire world. So I've just scooped a bunch into a piping bag and colored it blue because baby narwhals are like a bluish gray. Pipe your icing around the outside edge do 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 boop and then fill it in then using an offset spatula smooth it out and this is where the turntable really comes in handy because you just apply gentle pressure with the spatula and do a spin so we're gonna frost stack frost and stack oh my gosh to stack the top layer of the cake flip it upside down so the really flat part is on the top once the cake is assembled, now you're gonna ice the entire cake. I like to start at the top using the same technique. Usually I do a thin layer of icing first, which is called a crumb coat, and then you add a second icing. But because this cake is not very crummy, it's a very solid, like fudgy, moist cake, I'm just gonna do one layer. Then frost around the sides. All right, let's give it a spin on the top. Do, 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 do. Then around the sides, just take your spatula, Place it at an angle, hold it there gently, and spin around. After you've smoothed the sides all the way around, then you perfect the top. So save the top for last. Gently touch the top, the edge of the frosting, and pull towards you. Work your way all the way around. The cake is now all frosted and nice and smooth. And over here, I made some decorations to look like a little narwhal using fondant with some basic shapes. I just used a teardrop 
cookie cutter and made little fins. You're gonna stick these on the side of the cake. And using circle cookie cutters, I made some little eyes and the cheeks. And I know that narwhals in the wild don't have bright pink, rosy cheeks, but we're making our cake a little kawaii because, you know, it's a little magical. Place your fondant decorations onto the cake. This part is totally optional. If you would just like to decorate using icing, you can do that as well. And then we're gonna add the horn. Little eyes. Now the mouth. We've got a little smile. Happy little baby narwhal. <laughs> Look how cute. And the cheeks. I love. Now, last but not least, we're gonna add the unicorn horn that we've made out of candy. So I really like these, because again, with silicone molds, they're flexy and bendy, so you can just pull apart to loosen up the candy, give it a twist, then place into the cake. Ta-da! And there you have it, a dark chocolate sea salt narwhal cake using the unicorn horn treat mold. This candy unicorn horn you can use to make a bunch of different cakes like the unicorn cake. I made another cake very similar to this. I'll put a link down below if you'd like to check out that video. It would make making the horn a lot easier. You don't have to wrap fondant around and let it set out. You can just do this. And with this, you can make any animal cake magical by adding a unicorn horn. Like if you made a little cake that looked like a pug, you could add a horn on top and then it's a pug of corn. <gasps> or if you made a little owl cake, you could add a horn on top and then <gasps> you've got an owl corn. There are so many possibilities. Now I'm gonna show you how to make another unicorn theme treat using this mold. The next treat that we're gonna be making are unicorn horn popsicles. Like I said before, you can make them rainbow, you can layer different fruits or different juices, but today I wanted to make a golden horn because a lot of the unicorns that I see in artwork and in movies always have this beautiful, majestic, golden, like gold shimmery shining horn. So I wanted to make a recipe that would look the closest to that. And you know me, I also love tropical flavors. So today we are going to be making a tropical golden pop. And just a reminder, all of the measurements and ingredients will be in the description to this recipe. To make this popsicle, add frozen pineapple, frozen mango, some pineapple orange juice, and coconut water. Then put the lid on and blend together till well combined. It smells so good. It smells like a tropical summer party. I love it. Now take your unicorn horn mold, remove the handles, and fill up each mold. Once they're full, place the handles back on top. Our popsicles are ready to pop in the freezer, and this part's totally optional, but I always like to stick them on top of a baking sheet. So just pop them in the freezer, wait a few hours, and then <gasps> magical popsicles are ready to serve! Ta-da! Here are some of the treats that you can make using the unicorn horn mold, we made a delicious dark chocolate sea salt narwhal cake, and we made a candy horn. And another treat that you can make are unicorn horn popsicles. They just finished freezing. Look at this amazing popsicle. It looks majestic. It is a golden unicorn horn like this. Do you look like a unicorn? And remember, with these unicorn horn popsicles, you can make them any color that you'd like. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I love unicorns, so making these treats were super fun. I'll put a link down below to where you can find this unicorn horn treat mold if you want to check it out and you want one for yourself. All right, let me know in the comments down below what other kind of videos you'd like to see because I would love to make them. And if you make any of these treats, please take a picture and send it to me because I love seeing your creations. It makes me happy and it makes my day. Also, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you like to see these unicorn treats. And to show your support, click subscribe and ring the bell bell to receive notifications every time I post a new video. All right, thanks again, you guys. Bye. All right, now I can finally have one of these magical popsicles. Mm. Oh my gosh, it's so good. It's so good. It's tropical. It's magical. It's tropical. It's magical. <gasps> these are also dairy-free. Molly! Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mwah.